Hi, today I want to talk to all of you about the idea of flipping your classrooms. Now I know this isn't for everyone, but it definitely is for some of us. I was first introduced to the idea years ago when I had a colleague, Matt Brewer, who taught AP Calculus at our school, and his students performed quite well. And so at that time, I thought it was really just reserved for the math department. And then last year here at um, Ramona Junior High, Dr. Nash asked us to talk about it in our departments. And at that time, I thought, okay, yeah, I can consider it. And then when I had my evaluation and Ms. Brown observed me, there were a few things she said, you know, those are things that your students could have done at home. And I thought, what is going on with this idea of flipped class? Is this something I could benefit from? I did start to do some research. In fact, I spent the summer working on it and trying to learn as much as I could. When I came back to school, I started to flip my class. I have several videos which I worked on. One of the first things I've noticed is the students were learning at a much faster rate. Things that would take uh, weeks to learn, students were picking up in a matter of a day or two. And it was because they were doing more of the work. By the end of the week, they were starting to get some of the concepts or meeting their objectives uh, much quicker. Then in the next couple of weeks, I began to notice that the students were far more engaged than they were last year. And they were wanting to do more things in the classroom. They were excited to come to my class. I was more excited. And I felt like I was able to help the students more during the course of the period because I spent the entire period practicing the material that was harder for them to do. And then about a month or so later, I realized, wait a minute, I only have to teach this lesson one time. I have one class, the eighth grade um, English, and I only have to teach it once. Of course, I differentiated um, in terms of the activities, but I video record my lecture one time. That takes some time. And then I'm done. The students do all of the work, and that feels so much better. In fact, it was a no-brainer after that point. Flipping the class, I couldn't see it any other way. So prior to the flip, I had um, the traditional way of teaching, and I realized that it just created a group of passive learners. Kids would sit back, take notes, and as a teacher, I would try to fit in everything, instruction, check for understanding, group collaboration, independent, exit ticket, assessments, and then have some behavioral issues, as you can see. Have you ever been plagued by a series of questions? Well, here is what's going to happen to me. And you, no matter how much you teach, you get all these questions, and you want to be able to help them. Where is the time to do it? Ms. Miller, can I go sharpen my pencil? Okay. As you can see, this approach is certainly not sustainable at this level. Ms. Miller, can I go sharpen my pencil? Okay. That's it. We are going to flip this class. Flip the class! Is that where we spend the entire class doing all the work? Oh. Is this where we're supposed to take the notes at home and do the work in class? The following are lectures that should take place at home in a flipped classroom, and then the students should take Cornell notes. Students can access the computer lab, their cell phones, local and school libraries, or flash drives for the lectures. This is, these are the 13 colonies that we've just finished covering. We're now going to look at how those 13 colonies broke away from England in the American Revolution. Okay, so we're going to be looking at two different poems by Edgar Allan Poe. We're going to be looking at Annabelle Lee and Alone. Now, in those poems, I want us to focus on the imagery. Now, the words that come through in the actual text, the, the pictures they paint in your mind, if you will. Edgar Allan Poe, there is an association with most of his writings. His imagery often is associated with darkness or even death at times. So I want us to look for blatant imagery and things that are perhaps hidden in those texts. Now we are looking at those because we are going to read Telltale Heart. Okay, so by examining those two poems, we'll have a better insight into who the man was, how he wrote, kind of what drove him, and then when we move on to the short story, will have all that context for us. Okay. okay, so uh, we've been talking about speed, we've been talking about velocity. So we know the speed is distance divided by time. We know that velocity is speed in a given direction. Now we have acceleration. So acceleration can be three key things and they're all underlined right here. 
So we have an increase in speed, a decrease in speed, or a change in direction. So an increase in speed, you know, it's like you just push on the gas, you're in a car, you push on the gas, you're increasing speed, that's positive acceleration. And then we have a decrease in speed, which is a negative deceleration. So you're pushing on the brake, so now you're slowing down. So you guys have felt that before. And then we have changing direction. And a lot of people get a little confused with this because how could you be accelerating if you are actually uh, changing direction? So you could technically be going the same speed. So think about like a merry-go-round. You're on a merry-go-round, you're going around that right. So you're going in all different directions. You're changing direction. You might be going the same speed the entire time, but you're actually accelerating because you are changing direction. Today we're going to solve a question with the variables on both sides, okay? So first of all, by default, uh, usually we keep the x on the left side, okay? So we bring down the x, okay? x. In other words, since we keep the x on the left side, we need to get rid of the variable on the right side. How do we get rid, get rid of negative x? We need to use the inverse operation, okay? This is negative 2x, the inverse is positive 2x. Okay. Positive x. And you need to be fair. So you have to do the same thing on both sides. Okay? Do the same thing on both sides. So cancel the negative 2x with the positive x. So here we have a 3 plus 2, we have a 5x. Okay? You bring down the 4 equal to negative 7. Okay? You need to be very careful. Here you only get rid of negative x. So you still have negative seven. Many people, they will just bring down a seven, ignore negative, okay? This is not right, okay? You need to be careful. Next, we need to isolate the x, okay? You have a five and a four. Which one do we do first? Uh, based on backward solving, we need to get rid of four first, okay? The inverse operation of positive four is negative four. Negative four, okay? Do the same thing on both sides, okay? So then, get 5x equal to negative 7 minus 4, negative 11, okay? How do you get rid of 5? You do inverse operation. So 5x means 5 multiplied by x. So the inverse operation is divide, okay? You divide it by 5. Of course, you have to be fair on both sides. The same thing, okay? On both sides. So the x equal to negative 11 over 5 because you cannot simplify this is in the simplest form okay so that's the answer you find the answer okay. now you're going to see what happens when the students return to class one of the first things we like to do is check for understanding the tool that we use is called clickers and you'll see how that works this checks for understanding for every single student in the class. They all have a little graph they have to hold up um, to indicate their answers for the question that's been posted on the board through Plickers. I know right away whether or not the student got the question correct or incorrect, and it actually shows me on their phone um, as I pass over their paper. It also indicates um, the rate of progress on the board. And actually, so you can see it on here too, um, but I know immediately, so if I give students uh, the video lecture to do at home, then there's some accountability when they come back to class. So they want to do the work. They want to make sure that they're a part of whatever it is that's happening in class. They know this data can be used to um, determine where they're going to be working or what kind of work they're going to be doing that day. Here's a list of all the students, and it actually clicks it off to make sure that I've checked everyone um, on the list. And at the end, it gives us some really great data. Um, and this shows us that we're forgetting a few students, so I have to go back up if they don't see their name checked off. And then here we'll see the rate, um, what they selected, uh, and then here they'll get the answers. We have immediate feedback for the students. When you flip the class, the kids get the entire class period to work on the most difficult task. We as teachers get time to actually differentiate the material. They get to work on science labs, solving uh, equations, discussing a particular text, uh, mapping out um, the United States, uh, working collaboratively in groups. So it just gives us more meaningful time. Whether you flip one lesson, one unit, or one class, you have the option. Just flip. The kids want to leave you with this. We have access to the